How a free-to-play game handles monetization can make or break it. Countless games have gone to hell because of greed and pay-to-win monetization. Where does Lost Light lay in this landscape in terms of being pay-to-win? Currently, there are three main ways to spend your money as well as some minor ways that come and go. Let's dive into the three main ones first to see how they affect your game, starting out with premium. Please take everything I say in this video with a grain of salt, as the things I find to be worthless might hold value to you. I am just a bit greedy. Premium is a subscription that you have to pay monthly. There's an alpha tier and a beta tier, each with its own separate perks. The alpha tier costs $5 a month and gives you the following. If I'm being honest, all of these are pretty useless apart from the extra crafting slot for the crafting bench. Insurance is already really fast as most of the gear you lose will be back in your mailbox by the time you played one or two more matches. All of these are definitely convenient, but not something you're gonna feel like you need, especially the fancy dog tag. I just love picking up a premium dog tag from a player I just killed, knowing that the money he paid didn't help him at all in this situation. At least he'll get his gear back faster from the insurance if I decide to let him keep it. I think a lot of people will be drawn towards the extended premium storage here, but let me tell you that it's only 8x8, the same size as an all-purpose box. This is of course nice, but unless you're a big time hoarder, you'll be able to live without this just fine. The premium store is however quite nice, as it lets you buy a few cheaper loadouts every day, as long as you're not picky about which guns you use. There is a lot of convenience to be gained from the alpha premium, but nothing that would change your life in your day-to-day -day playing of Lost Light. Moving over to the beta premium, it is a step up, both in price and the amount of perks you get. This is also where things start to get a little bit shady. When you click to purchase the beta premium, it'll say that the separate prices of alpha and beta are $5 and $10. However, you can't buy beta without also buying alpha. And because that's the case, they've been nice enough to bundle them together for you for $14. A whole dollar discounted, which isn't even a real discount seeing as you weren't able to buy them separately to begin with. What you get though from the beta premium is this. And I just have to start out with what is the elephant in the room for me. The increased size of the shelter box. For those who don't know, the shelter box lets you safely store items before a wipe to let you keep them after the wipe. In my opinion, a feature that should never have existed in the first place. But also letting people pay to save more stuff is downright dreadful. I think this is gonna be what makes people buy the beta premium, because they don't want to lose their stuff. Overall though, most of the perks in the beta tier lets you save money on different things. It doesn't really boil down to that much though. A standard set of gear costs around 50k to insure, meaning you save 15k. Heidi already sells enough ammo, and unless you're dead set on taking more than 360 rounds for a sniper rifle into a raid, you won't ever need this. Extra passive skill XP is however really nice, seeing as passive skills let you do things like sprint more and consume less stamina. The increase in capacitation time is also really controversial to me. If you're fighting someone in a team, they basically get 20 seconds more on the timer to revive each other. It's something that can really tip the tide of a battle, and this is borderline pay to win for me. It just shouldn't exist. Faster shelter upgrades are just plain unnecessary, as having access to a level 2 crafting table 20 minutes earlier than normal just doesn't matter. I've also never seen SOS commissions actually get used, so that goes down as another useless perk for me. Again, a lot of convenience here, but nothing worth spending $14 a month for, in my opinion. If they did give you some premium currency as well, to let you buy some skins once you save up enough, I could have considered it somewhat valuable, but as it stands, it has a way too big a price tag. If you want my opinion, don't buy premium. But it's your money. The next payable feature we're gonna take a look at is the infamous battle pass, and boy does it offer low value. Well, technically it offers a ton of value when looking at how many items you get. However, the fact that nothing but the skins and containers are permanent quickly drops its value, at least for me. That sweet gun and level 5 armor set you got will be lost when you die. Even if you manage to keep it around for a while, it's only good for a season. These items will be going away in the imminent wipe as well. 
There are however a lot of nice items in here like a mini card case and dog tag case and everything else you get in here will help you out in the game. There's decent guns, decent ammo, armor, healing items and the like as well as two skins and some other cosmetics. A little bit of the problem also comes from the fact that I haven't even claimed half of the stuff I've unlocked in the free battle pass so far. I just haven't needed it. I find so many guns and other gear during my raids that these items would just be taking up space in my inventory. I end up selling more guns than I manage to use. There is however some shady business involved when you try to purchase the battle pass. Basically there's two versions you can buy. The normal companion plus simply gives you access to the premium battle pass while the advanced companion plus gives you a 30 level head start into the battle pass as well as 1 million luna bonus. When you try to buy either of these, you'll be offered the $30 top up package, which gives you 1980 LP, which is the name of the premium currency. This is more than double the amount you need for the standard Companion Plus, and still a lot more than you need for the advanced Companion Plus. I'm 100% sure they've deliberately made it so there's no top up tier close to either of the sums you need. There should have been a tier in between the $10 and $30 ones. Alternatively, be smart and buy a combo of these packages to not spend more than you need. You'll save $15 by buying these two packages combined to get the standard Companion Plus package. Well, through all this, I would say that the Battle Pass is actually quite decent at the $15 price tag from the fact that you get the free permanent cosmetics, including two skins, and an easier time with your gear throughout the season. Also, because I can steal the gear you paid for when I kill you. Just don't get tricked into buying more premium currency than you need. Next up, we have the shop. I have no problems with the shop at all. It sells you a range of cosmetic items in the form of skins for your character and your guns, all of which are permanently tied to your account. I generally find skins to be a waste of money, but I have to admit I was pretty close to buying the Ghost Force skin when it appeared in the shop. I do however find $10 to be quite a steep price just to change the appearance of your character and look a little cooler than other people, but that's just my stance on skins. Cosmetics as a way to generate revenue without affecting gameplay is something that's completely fine for me. Go for it. I do also want to mention one recurring monetization feature we often see and that is the draw. This one is quite predatory. It basically gives you a table of items to draw from using tickets. You can draw once for 5 tickets and 10 times for 45 tickets. One ticket costs 10 LP which means one draw costs 50 LP which again costs somewhere in the vicinity of 80 cents. In this draw, the ghillie suit is the grand prize, and it has a drop rate of a whooping 0.5%, which means that statistically you'll only see it once in 200 draws. You might of course be lucky and draw it in less, but you might also be unlucky and draw it in more. All of the items also stay in the pool, so you can draw each item more than once, basically leaving you with a ton of guns instead. Except for the emotes, avatars and avatar frames, those are taken out of the pool, once you get them. You do get some guaranteed rewards for drawing though, through the generous rewards program. For drawing a hundred times, you'll get 8.5 million luna, as well as a Mars secure case for 30 days, and a unique collector's key case. I haven't seen this one in the game before, and according to its description, it's got quite some space. 100 draws will cost you 450 tickets, which will cost you 4,500 LP. This equals $100 if you go for the biggest top-up package, or $80 if you combo up these two. Quite expensive, and you're not even guaranteed to get the ghillie suit. I'd urge anyone to never participate in these draws. It's too much of a gamble, and it's easy to fall into a rabbit hole where you just keep buying more tickets until you get the ghillie suit, because you've already spent so much and it would all be a waste unless you get the ghillie. It's a slippery slope. Now before I give my conclusion whether Lost Light is paid to win or not, I want you to pause the video and comment down below if you think the game is paid to win based on what you've heard so far. What you heard of above is all the ways you can spend your money on Lost Light, and as you can see, you mostly gain convenience. You do also get some powerful guns and ammo through the battle pass, all of which are quite temporary. Personally, I label that as convenience as well. They won't help you get better at the game, and they won't help you outplay a better free-to-play player. 
I've killed plenty of players in my time that both have premium dog tags and better guns and ammo than I've had. These perks won't help your situational awareness and it won't help your aim. The aim assist will do that for you. Now if Lost Light is pay to win or not depends on your definition of the term pay to win. If paying for anything that affects gameplay is pay to win, then yeah, Lost Light is pay to win. But in my opinion that isn't what pay to win is. The definition I go by is that pay to win gives you a real edge and advantage over other players. It's pay to win only if there's a higher chance the paying player will win our fight if we meet. And in that regard I do not feel like Lost Light is pay to win. I don't care if they get their shelter upgrades faster or if they top the leaderboards. I care if they beat me in a firefight or not. Other players having access to a few temporary and stronger guns earlier due to the battle pass isn't something I'm afraid of when playing Lost Light. They won't be able to unlock these guns at the trading center unless they find new ones in a raid anyways. Lost Light is in my opinion a pay to get an easier time type of game and not a pure pay to win game. They are however a bit shady with how they monetize these things as I mentioned before. If you're interested in learning more about wipes in Lost Light, I recommend checking out this video right here, right now, and remember to subscribe before you go. See you in the next one.